Namaste. Asiaki talari shiakapar ro shiamiki tiatar. Let's take some breaths together. However you see fit, observe the breath. Notice if you're breathing in and out through the nostrils or the mouth, where your breath hits your belly, your chest. Maybe it's really shallow, maybe it's really long and deep. Just observe without any judgment. I see Tikia Tara. Oh, I see a car. We are connecting with anything. Um, from our past lives that will assist us in this current carnation. Incarnation of the Kosh, Kosh records. Shwaksi siki ti akar akar ayay shika kuti ti. We're going to have to breathe deeply for this one. So in your own time, we we'll begin to lengthen the breath. And moving through our breathing between the inhalation through the nose and that first the exhalation out of the mouth. Pushing out anything in the body that does not serve us. Releasing anything. I'm channeling my friend and soul sister Quartz, her last video. Her transmission was releasing any timelines. Kriki The fairies help us. Krishya kiki ko kraya. In through the nose and out through the mouth. One last big one. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And release. So, just letting the breath return to normal, closing your eyes, maybe putting your hand on your heart, connecting to the photon at the center, the source, your higher self. If you experience any burping during this session, this transmission, it makes sense because we're clearing our energetic field and sometimes burps and sounds and things come up, shaking, a blast through the heart, the solar plexus. It's nothing to be fearful of as long as it doesn't scare you too much and as long as it doesn't cause you any pain. Flushing out any low vibrations. Ah, <sighs> Let 
that just subtle feeling of energetic connection above a white beam of light can be pictured coming out of the crown of the head and that beam goes to the center of the body connecting you with mother gaia below and into the earth so anything that does not serve us will be transmuted be taken away by mother gaia transmuted and re-delivered into our bodies and then up into the collective consciousness Ah, you might feel tingling sensations in the crown of your head. Karashi, I tea, me a kitty, a shakaput, ya tea, kati, si kitty, titi, 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 little tuning. Tia, kitty, titi, titi, a kakakakakaka, ya, ya, kataka, ya, titi, 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 tara. swirling within and around you. It was last year, amidst the global pandemic, that I moved, well, I sought refuge in London near my family. I was going through what many know as a dark night of the soul. There's a lot to unpack with my story and it's gonna take time. But last night I was at an event that was um, discussing with the panel um, how COVID and this um, global pandemic has affected London's communities of color. And that was an element of my story that I hadn't really addressed yet or confronted in my spiritual journey, uh, my awakening, my second awakening really. My first was in 2013 and then um, I'd say like 2020 was my second. Excuse me, as I said, energy coming down. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went through a really, really dark phase. Um, I was living in the Netherlands at the time. I was going on my fifth year being there. Had a bad breakup in 2019. Um, that was the beginning of my downward spiral. 
but uh, what I've learned is what goes down must come up again. And as I was graveling, growling, <laughs> scraping at the bottom of the barrel, digging my hole deeper and deeper, I was actually getting closer <laughs> to the light. Um, and I'm sure many people in our community can relate. It's when we hit rock bottom that we find ourselves and start to figure things out, not because somebody told us to, but because we were ready to. Um, so for me, I chose myself and on June 24th, 2020, I booked a flight. Um, it was between going to rehab, which um, that's a story for another time, or going to to heal somewhere. I knew I needed to heal. I knew I needed to, I knew I needed to get out of the environment that I was in um, to start to see new opportunities, to see new perspectives, to be able to look back at where I was and decide for myself um, whether or not it was serving my highest good and it wasn't. Um, so fast forward to now, it is September 5th, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's September 5th, <laughs> um, and I am married, got married in April, I have two stepkids, so I've become a mother in this last year, I've healed um, a lot, I'm closer to family, and I've, my identity as a, a mixed person of mixed race, my father being from Cameroon and my mother American with German descent. Um, I found my place within myself with my identity being mixed, with being American in Europe, with being a spiritual person, with um, a gift that popped up a few months ago. My light language really didn't come through until yeah, a couple months ago and a few months ago, a few months ago. Um, I'm not really tracking the days, but more the feeling inside. And I just know that I'm like, um, I've been told a kid in a candy store. So I'm just trying all the things. And I just, I guess, to conclude this little storytelling aspect of the video, um, my inner child healing has been like the most epic and most life-changing for me at this um, stage in my journey in that I have eight inner ch children, um, eight versions of my younger self, and um, one of those includes my inner child today. Um, but there was so much trauma and heartache and heartbreak and, and you know, feelings of unworthiness and self-judgment and low self-esteem and not being seen, feeling seen, understood, heard. And, you know, um, I was born really ill. Um, I had a life-saving operation and I was born premature. And that led to a complicated relationship with my mother. But anyways, <laughs> fast forward to now, and I will share my full story, whether it's in video, um, written, uh, I'm excited to share it because one thing that I'll conclude with is that through everything, I just was building up this feeling like, when is an Anne? When is somebody like myself gonna come for me and be there for me like I am for everybody else? And what I've learned is one, there's only one me. Um, we are unique. And so the only person that can be there for ourselves is ourselves. <laughs> And we can have a support system, but it's not until that you understand what your needs are, who you are, that I feel we can ask others for help or, I mean, uh, really from the bottom of our heart, feel confident in how we're connecting with people because we know who we are, not who we were told to be. So yeah, and rant. <laughs> um, I love you guys very much. And the support of the community that I have found has been accessible because I chose myself. See ya. The angels are here.
here. so much love. Ah. Ah. Light language is so much more than sounds, hand motions. It's, it's the heart. It's the, the, the language of the heart. It's the language that connects us all and not everybody has something that manifests now or then but it's connect with yourself be there for yourself and the rest will follow oh, listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for just being you. I see you. I appreciate you. I love you. Take your time to 
return into the physical body, to feel your breath, to feel your fingers, your toes. Mm -hmm. Sending you guys lots of love. Namaste. May the love and light be with you forever and always. Even in the dark, there's always the light. Darkness is just the absence of light.